Ah. Police dogs, most important tool in the law enforcement arsenal. And today, we're gonna show you how these police officers and their four-legged partners get this job done. We're gonna get you to 411 on 911. Yeah. Every minute of every day, a 911 emergency call goes out. I'm Tony Pagaro. For more than 30 years, I've been providing emergency service training in the U.S. and abroad. I'm going to take you inside and show you exactly how this dangerous job gets done. From the equipment and training to those dedicated men and women who put their lives on the line, you're going to see it all. So hold on. You're about to enter my world. Police dogs, you ever wonder how they get trained? Today we're going to show you. We're at the International Canine College here in West Palm Beach, Florida, where you're going to get to see a law enforcement class with their dogs go through everything they need to know. You're going to see obedience, attack work. You're going to get to see narcotics, explosive detection, a lot of different things that they're going to do. All of it for law enforcement purposes, only law enforcement purposes. I'm telling you, it's going to be an interesting show. Let's get started. <laughs> Right now they're doing control work. These dogs have to listen. No matter what, once they're out in the field, these dogs have to be under total control of these officers. Once they're amongst the public, they could be at train stations, bus stations, airports, it doesn't matter. These dogs have to be obedient. They have to listen to the handler and they have to do what the handler tells them at any time. Very, very important that these dogs work on command. You don't want a dog like this out loose and doing something stupid. No, nope, they have to stay under control. These dogs never do anything unless these officers tell them to. What you're seeing right now is they're putting control on that dog. That dog has to release when he tells them to. When the officer tells the suspect to stop fighting his dog, he's gonna release immediately. That's put all the control that's required of these dogs. A lot of different things these dogs got to do, but every one of the things that they do has to be under control. The utmost is that the officer and the dog work in unison and they work together. He wants to bite the agitator, but he's going to control it. We're with instructor Justin Rigney. As you just saw, he was working this dog. Justin, man, thanks a lot for being on the show. Man. <laughs> hey, man, what were you doing with this dog? I mean, dude, you seemed like you were you were getting the dog's attention. You were outing them, and then you were putting them back on. Can you explain what you were doing on This particular dog is very high in drive. He, he demonstrates what we call fight drive, high levels of fight drive. So he doesn't want to let go of what he's won, what he's, what he's conquered. So what we want to teach him is that he can have as much fun by letting go and biting again as he can just holding on the whole time. Because what we do in our practical applications, dog has to let go when we ask him to. So it's an exercise that teaches him to out and then rebite, out and rebite, and it becomes an enjoyable exercise. With this particular dog, he's got so much fight, he doesn't right. want to let go, but we saw that the exercise went pretty well. Justin, before you gotta go back and get another hit here, uh, real quick, for our viewers, these dogs, they're never treated cruelly. Never. Everything Absolutely. that they're doing no. is all win. These dogs, we're, we're building on God-given drive and instinct, and we're enhancing what they already love to do. Great, I'll let you get back to work, right. man. Thanks a lot. This is one of the training areas where they do narcotics training and explosives training. You see a lot of little shelves and compartments all through here. Whole objective behind this is they're gonna bring a dog in. They put a substance right here. If you look, we got marijuana. They're working narcotics right now. We got marijuana in here and there's a little towel in there. What's gonna happen is they're gonna bring the dog in. The dog has to be able to identify exactly where that is. So the dog's gonna come in, he's gonna search up and down, up and down, up and down. The handler's gonna direct him all the way around this building. Right over here, you see inside this room, we got all different types of stuff. Once the dog picks up on the scent, He's going to come over here. The handler is going to make him alert. He's going to open this up, let the dog pull it out. Dog's going to retrieve it. What that's doing is building some drive on that dog. It's letting the dog know my toy is in here. I pick up that odor. I get to play with my toy. It's real important. All these little things that you see around here, it's all created for one thing, to get this dog to look and search for a certain substance. Whether it's explosives, whether it's narcotics, these dogs are trained methodically. They put a lot of work into these dogs, I'm telling you. We're gonna to get to see a couple of them work in a little bit. The dog's nose is very sensitive. They can pick up on microscopic particles of odor. Indicates that their toy is there. Once they find it, they get to play. Over and over and over, these dogs, repetition, that's the key. They're gonna go down, they're gonna pick up on the odor, 
they're going to indicate by sitting. Once they sit, that's called a passive response. There's their toy. They get to play. Tail of wagon, they're having a great time. Instructors will try to fake the dog out, make it believe they're putting the toy somewhere else, see if the dog's responding just to the odor. There he goes. He's going to go down. He's going to search around. Oh, no, you didn't fool me this time. Here it is. They get to play. Searching methodically all around is their key. They have to be sure that it's there. Once it's there, bang, sit, reward, and I get the play. It's always a play, seek, fetch game. These officers are doing narcotic searches here. What they're doing right now is they're coming down. The dogs have to search each vehicle. They have to pick out the car that has the narcotics in it. Every vehicle has narcotics hidden in a certain area. Marijuana, heroin, cocaine, all different types of narcotics. They put it in stage in different areas of the car. Each dog has to come down. Police officers do a lot of car stops and they do a lot of narcotic inspections. So this is a very important part. This is the basic training. This is how they all start. All right, each dog has to now build its desire to want to play. It's got to understand, okay, my toy is in there. Forget about the substance, that's not important. Odor tells them my toy's there. So that's what the dog is doing. He's going to work each car. He's going to make sure that when he finds it, boom, I'm going to sit, I'm going to get my toy. Now, on some of the exercises, you'll see where the instructor throws the toy in. The reason for that is the dog stays focused on source. Odor's there, reward pops up. As long as I sit and I stare, it's going to come to me. That's the nature of this. As you saw, the instructor threw the towel in. That towel's his reward. He just sits there and stays focused on the odor. Towel shows up. He doesn't know where it came from. This dog wants to please. He wants to play. That's all he wants to do. Heel. 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 Push. Heel. Good boy. That's my good boy. <laughs> I tell you, so far you've been seeing these dogs work. My boy Ike and I, we just decided we're going to go through our paces. But right now, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back and we're going to be in the Dominican Republic where you're going to get to see exactly how all this training is applied. We're going to get to see bomb dogs and drug dogs working at an airport environment. I'm telling you, it's going to be pretty amazing. So let me go give Ike some water. When we come back, Dominican Republic. See you then. Come on, buddy. We're at the Punta Cana International Airport Canine Training Center, where you're going to get to meet my guys. CSI International has been training dogs down here for 11 years, and this is the team that does it. From Perot, my senior instructor, all of my instructors right here, to my director of operations, my brother, A.B. Ravello. We get the job done. Right there, you can see Dunya picked up the scent and responded. It's called an aggressive response. He's going to scratch. But look at the intensity of this dog. So really wants that ball. But one of the things that we're introducing is the odor of the narcotic, which is marijuana. So what will happen now is this dog is going to repeat this over and over again. You see, dogs learn by repetition. We keep repeating it over and over and over again. As we keep repeating it, it gets ingrained in the dog. I pick up the odor. My ball is there. I'm going to get my toy. OK, now what you're going to see is Reno. It's more advanced. What you just saw was doing it before, doing the basics. Reno now has to, on the advanced side, he has to indicate what box. You see, you go four boxes. So he's going to go down the line. He's going to search each box. Once he gets to the box, he's going to alert, telling the handler, here it is right there. Then he gets his reward. Same principle. The only difference is now he's only working off of the substance itself. Right now, what you saw was Reno come down the line. He checked every box. He had to be, he had to be sure that, okay, yeah, here's the substance. 
passed down each box, searched it, even went past it, came back. Basically what he was doing was working off a scent cone. Right now we have a little bit of a breeze blowing in that direction. So that's going to create a scent cone, meaning that the odor is going to be beyond it. Reno went down to the next box, sniffed around, hey, it's not here, come back. The handler did exactly what he was supposed to do. Present it, the dog picked up the odor, alert it. That's exactly what goes on. This is how we train these dogs. This is no joke. We get it done. We're in Terminal B. This is the departure area. This is where passengers are leaving the Dominican Republic. With Four million passengers a year coming in and out of this airport, certain things could happen. You could have people taking things that they shouldn't have, trying to do things they shouldn't do. This airport, has 11 explosive detection dogs and 11 narcotic detection dogs on standby 24-7 that check everything that goes in and out of this airport. They take this situation very serious. First inspection start at the ticket counter. As passengers are waiting in line, dogs are going and checking their bags. Literally millions and millions of bags go through this airport on an annual basis. These dogs have to search each one of them. You go through all these bags all day long, that's a lot of work. As you can see though, the dogs are really having a good time doing it. Tails are wagging, they don't care. They're just looking for their toy. There it goes. Come on boy, go get it. There we go. So as you see, that was Star and his handler. They went up and down the line of passengers. They checked every bag, methodically, in and out, in and out. Little children, passengers, didn't even phase that dog. Dog was just searching, looking for what is in this bag. Once the dog passed and cleared the whole area, what they'll do is they'll put a bag with a training aid inside. That's so that this dog can have some fun. The only way this dog can have fun is by playing. And that's what we do. We let these dogs have a lot of fun. So all day long in their training, they get to play. We put bags out, they indicate on it. That's what we're looking for. Knowing that the dog is working, knowing that it has the capabilities of still detecting drugs. Happens to be cocaine in this bag. I wouldn't want to be the guy getting on a plane here. Right now, life's gonna get really miserable for this guy. That's a drug detection dog. That bag has drugs in it. Guess what? They're gonna take this guy in the back. They're gonna have a real serious conversation with him. This is the secondary inspection area. This is where passengers have to come if they found something or something looks a little funny in their bags. They have to come over here to get it checked out. <laughs> this is definitely not a line I wanna be in. We're in the belly of the beast. When you check your bag in upstairs, it goes through a whole series of conveyors, but it ends up right here. See this guy? He's checking out their bags as they go through here. They're gonna come in, they're gonna go out over there, and their dogs are gonna check them over on that side. My years of law enforcement, I'm gonna tell you something. I know that you can hide narcotics in just about anything. They check it here, the dogs check it there. It ain't making it to the plane. This is the last inspection before these bags are loaded onto a plane. Literally, hundreds of bags are sitting on a cart. These dogs have to search each one. Going through it, looking for that little bit older that's gonna tell them, yeah, my toy is here. They gotta search it, they gotta get it done, and they gotta get it done quick because these bags gotta go. It's pretty hot out there also. These dogs are working pretty hard. Right now, this handler with his dog, King, Thanks. has just checked all these bags back here. See if there's any drugs in any of them. Once they go around it, this dog works pretty hard. So what we're gonna do right now, so that this dog get to play, we're gonna take a bag that has drugs in it. We're gonna place it amongst all these other bags. Let the dog search it again. When the dog indicates on it, bang, he gets to play. This is the only way these dogs have fun. At this airport, they use real narcotics. The instructor will place the narcotics into a bag. He's gonna take that bag, put it amongst all the other bags on a cart. I'll tell you, when you look at this bag and it's sitting up there, you can't tell it from any other bag that's there. Dog's got to go around, and he's got to totally identify exactly what bag has the narcotic in it. The handler, he's going to take the dog, he's going to keep him focused, he's going to maneuver him around, and what he has to do is make this dog search, continuing on, and as the dog indicates on the bag, the handler doesn't go to it. He lets the dog take him to it. Once he indicates on it, he's going to sit, bang, reward. We're with the Explosive Detection Unit, CESA. They have the bomb detection dogs that work at this airport every day. These guys have to search every part of this airport, including the bags, 
including the catering, including everything that goes out of this terminal, it all has to be checked on a daily basis. Every passenger that goes through this airport has to be checked. You know, after 9-11, there's a whole heightened level of security when it comes to the explosive detection side. These are the guys that are on the front line. Every day they have to go out here and perform their duties. It's pretty amazing to watch them do it. I got a chance to work with these guys for a long time, and I'm telling you right now, they know their business. Early on in the show, we got to see some of the narcotic dogs being trained. What we did is introduce how you progress a dog through its training process. Exact same thing happens with these dogs, except they use explosives, a variety of different types of explosives. Also, their reward is always passive. <laughs> Let's face it, nobody wants a dog jumping all over a bag that might have a bomb in it. Watching these dogs work, you'll see two things. One, you'll see their intensity. Two, you'll see their ability to detect multiple different levels of substances. When we're talking about substances, you start talking about a lot of different things. You're talking about C4, deck cord, black powder, chlorates, nitrates, PETN. I'm telling you, there's an enormous amount of explosives that is needed to make up any type of explosive device. These are the dogs that know how to find it. It's pretty intense stuff. Not only that, but you gotta look at the bravery of these guys. Just think about it. How would you like to get up every day, get in your car, drive to work, knowing that you're looking for a bomb? Hey, there's people out there that have to do it. Those are the people of 911 Emergency Service, I guess, huh? Well, we're gonna get deeper into this program. We're gonna go back now and we're gonna show you the actual explosives. And I'll tell you, I looked at some of these explosives. There's enough there that can blow a hole in the water. Right here, we have a variety of explosives. This is the real deal. Man, I'm excited. I'll tell you, get me around explosives, things that go boom. I love it. Been training bomb dogs for a long time. So this is it. But here they have the real stuff. Got a variety of different deck cords, switches, black powder. We have Lodex. Right over here, my, one of my favorites. Cast booster. This stuff here is amazing. It's what they use for blasting. Take that switch, put it into that. Life gets ugly real quick. The reason they have this stuff is because this is what the dogs train on. This is some serious business. When I came down here 11 years ago and I told them what they need, they thought I was crazy. They said, Tony, what? You want us to have what? What kind of explosives? I told them, I said, look, that's what you want the dogs to find. That's what they have to train on. And that's what they have. And that's what they do. I'm telling you. Well, I've been really excited about all this stuff. And um, hmm, I'm going to see if I can uh, maybe take some of this stuff, start putting some things together, a little of this, a little of that. And I'm looking over at uh, Perot right now who's telling me, no, no, no. Man, that seems to be the philosophy over here. I want to play. They say no, no, no. Anyway, guys, I'm going to get back to you in a minute. But right now, I'm going to start playing around with some of this stuff. I understand. I ain't going to do it. I'm not. I'm, I'm telling you, I won't. Believe me, I won't. See this bag? It's probably nothing. Somebody could have just left it behind. But in today's airports, nothing gets unchecked. They're gonna do, if this bag's been left behind, they're gonna bring one of the bomb detection dogs in. He's gonna sniff it. If he alerts on this bag, bomb squad comes in, they have to remove it. We're dealing with explosives here, so the handler is not going to take the dog directly to the bag. He's going to start at a little bit of a distance. He's going to let the dog search a regular pattern, going up and down, searching a variety of things. His normal search patterns require him to continue on searching everything in the area. Now he gets to the bag. Do I have an explosive? Do I not? If he sits, bang, there it is. This is Cole. He's a trained bomb dog. Look at the intensity. He's looking right at that bag. Naturally, this is a simulation. But this is what they do every day. There's real explosives in here. I know, I'm sitting on top of it, right? However, Cole will just sit there and stay focused on that bag. He will not move. He's just going to keep staring and staring and staring. And guess what? He's looking at his handler saying, hey, where's my toy? I did my job. What do you want me to do? Take it out and disarm it for you too? A premium. Good boy. That means reward. Woo. It's the only Spanish I know, dog Spanish. Right now, they're checking all the cargo that's in the cargo terminal. All of this has to go out to one plane or another. Doesn't matter what plane, doesn't matter where it's going. They have to make sure that there's no explosives in anything that leaves this terminal to those planes. I'll tell you, it's a tough job. This is a hot place. 
These dogs work all day long. They rotate the dogs. Dog can only work 20 minutes. So after 20 minutes, they're gonna take this dog out, bring another one in. But this is an ongoing, all day affair. We're on the other side of the airport right now at Caribbean Catering Services. This is the company that handles all of the catering for all of the planes coming in and out of this airport. Everything that goes to a plane must be scrutinized. They have their own canine program. All the dogs check everything that goes to the plane. They don't care what it is. From the catering boxes to the roll-on carts, it all gets checked. They want to make sure that drugs do not leave this airport onto a plane heading anywhere else in the world. We're inside a catering truck. All of this equipment that you see is all going out to a plane. But before it gets there, it has to be completely checked. They want to make sure that no drugs are in any of this equipment that gets to a plane and gets on a plane. Everything that leaves this airport gets checked. They have canines that inspect every piece of cargo that departs this airport. But before it can get on that plane, it's got to get checked by these dogs. They're looking for narcotics. There's other dogs looking for explosives. But nothing leaves this airport unless it's inspected. Well, we've reached the end of this program. Let me tell you something. Anytime you can get me around dogs, explosives, drugs, I'm a happy camper. Comes from my years of law enforcement. I'll tell you, old Dakota here had a hard day. I kind of did too. Anyway, right now I want to thank all the men that participated in this program. All the canine handlers, the DNCD with CESA, all the bomb dogs, the drug dogs, everybody that helped us, everybody here at the Punta Cana International Airport that participated in their interviews. These guys are aces, I'm telling you. Really, really nice. Bunch of nice people. Gotta love it. Like always, for all the men and women out there that provide 911 emergency service, that's what this program is all about. It's a tribute to you guys. And always, always, for all our men and women in our armed forces, you guys always be safe. I'm Tony Pigaro. Until the next time we get together, when I get you the 411 on 911 emergency service, take care. Hey, Dakota. How you doing, baby? You're a good girl.